Arguably one of the most important features for live performances on the CDJ2000 is the three hot cues. These three hot cues labeled A, B, and C on the player allow you to jump instantly upon pressing the button to any preset point during the track. These points can be recorded in advance using Pioneer's record box software, or you can do it on the fly in the middle of a mix. I have personally found the hot cue bank probably one of the most indispensable tools in creating my mixes. So without further ado, let's take a look at what they can do. You don't even have to be using the record box software to be able to take advantage of the hot cue bank. For example, I've already loaded a track into deck number three, and as you can see, there are no presets along the top of uh, the waveform here. Now, to set presets, it's relatively easy. It's basically just storing memory um, onto whatever your storage device is. So anything that is indicated above the waveform are items that have been stored or places in the track that have been stored as a, a piece of data so that if I have a hot cue stored in here, I can instantly recall back to that time. Conversely, everything on the bottom of the waveform, you see how there's a little uh, orange carrot down in the very bottom of the screen here? That's what's active on the deck right now. So if I hit Q, it goes ahead and starts playing as you would expect it to. But I can set a new cue point. So let's save that one to memory since that sounds like it's right on beat. We can save that to memory and you can see it says memory player two. So it's saved to our USB flash drive over here. And you see how it's created an orange tick mark above the waveform now. So that means that I can go around here and I can create new cue points. So there's another one I'd like to make right here. And I can store that one to memory as well. Now the problem that arises with this is that although we can store 10 of these different cue points per track, we have to call those cue points up every time we want to use them. They're not instant. So let's just set a couple of random cue points in here. Set one here. Set another one here. You can see it takes time to load that point. Every time this center part flashes, the little ring inside of the ring, the white one, flashes, that means that there's a buffer that's taking place that it, before it uh, actually loads the cue point in. So the way we solve this is with hot cues. When you start the CDJ, none of the hot cue buttons are illuminated. Doesn't matter what you press on, nothing's going to happen if these are not illuminated. Now there is a spot where a fourth hot cue would be, except it's recessed into the, into the CDJ itself. And what you do, is uh, there's a little Morse code on a lot of these features. So if you press it once, that enables the record feature and that turns your buttons red. And if you hold it down, it calls up the hot cues. But on this one, as you can see, we don't have any hot cues on this particular track preset. So let's set some. What we do is we hit the record button and then wherever we want in the track for that hot cue to start, we can cue to it, we can do everything that we would do with a normal cue to set it, but as soon as we got it where we want it, all we have to do is hit A, and it starts playing instantly. Now to jump out of record mode, because every time you hit that A when it's red, it's going to set a new point for A. So what we do is we get out of record mode by tapping A again. Now every time we tap A, no matter what we're doing over here, if we're doing some crazy stuff, it'll always jump right back to A. Doesn't matter if you're queued up, doesn't matter if you're queued up two thirds of the way through the song, anytime you hit A, it starts playing right on that, right on that point that we saved. Now let's take a look at a track that we've already pre-programmed some hot cues on. I mentioned earlier that all of the hot cues and cue points above the waveform are things that have been stored in memory and everything below is what's live. So what you'll notice is that when you load up a track, just the first cue point from memory is loaded in. That is the only point we get below there. We can scrub through all these different areas, but again, it takes a buffer time. Now to call up those hot cues, it doesn't instantly do it when every track loads. So for example, if this were to pop up, and if I were to simply hit hot cue A, even though I've selected this new track forever by Joe Garston, it's going to jump back to that last track that I just played. So what you have to do every time you select a new song, if you want to use certain cue points from this, 
you have to hold down the record button. So record is just simply pressing it once and then calling up all of the previous hotcues is holding it down and then selecting each one. So now we have all three loaded in the bottom here. So we have our original cue, our QA, B, and C. So you can see already that we can actually create some rhythmic effects just using the hot cue section as well as the jog wheel. One really cool feature that I really see underused with DJs is instead of just having all of your hot cues on one track, we have A, B, and C all on this forever track. What we can actually do is we can load all these hot cues, that's fine and dandy for one track, but we can also go into another track and load in certain hot cues from there. So let's say that I want to have hot cue B loaded for uh, the night out for Martin Solvig. Now, what we just did is we have B indicated as being our hot cue on here. So every time we hit B, it's going to be this Martin Solvig track. But we can also hit A and go back to the track that we were previously playing that we've saved that hot cue on. So you can see that can come in real handy when you're trying to do some on-the-fly mixing. You can also do uh, some more advanced techniques that we'll get into later, but that is the basics of the Hot Q Bank on the CDJ2000.